Hello. So you're trying to do serial dilutions calculations, and let's see what we have. So so far, it's asking us that you have to put in a hundred aliquot. So that's the original solution with four hundred with three hundred microliters of your dilutant. And this part is right. So it's going to be a one to four dilution because the way that you're calculating it. Uh, so it's whatever you're putting in. So your aliquot, so that's 100, and the total amount of solution in the uh, beaker, let's say, or test tube, is 400. So this is a 1 to 4 ratio. So in the last box, I'm assuming it's asking how much of the original solution did you put in there? Well, 100 microliters. Okay, so that part's good for now. So now next, that, that 100 earlier, that means that it's... It's a one to, one to four dilution, right? So that means that out of that 100, so we said it's a one to four dilution, if you cross multiply it, it means that out of that 100 microliters, so if we cross multiply, you're gonna get 100 equals four X and then solve X equals 25. 25 out of that 100 is actually um, what your original solution is. So when you do this, when you add a hundred now from the previous solution into your second, okay, so now that we've determined that in the next, in test tube two, you have a ratio of 25 over 400. When you divide this, you you're going to get the ratio of 1 to 16 and this is important because now when you do the next set of calculations and you cross multiply how much of the original stock solution is actually in this one after you cross multiply you're going to get x equals to 6.25 6.25 to five microliters. And if you follow this pattern all the way down, so essentially you're just dividing by four. Um, and I guess you've kind of realized that already when you wrote out the ratio for the dilutions made, you should get 1.5625 microliters and divide this by four, 0 0.390625 microliters. So by following the same method, so that's so the next one is going to be you have 6.25 of the original out of 400 and this is how you're going to get 6.25 divided by 400 gives you a 1 to 64 ratio, perfect. And then it's a 1 to 64 ratio by x over 100 after you cross multiply and solve for x, you're gonna get x equals 1.5625, and you'll do it again. So just double checking your answer, you will get a one to 256 ratio. So that's exactly what we've been doing so far. And 100 divided by 256 to solve for x, you're going to get 0 0.390625. Something to keep in mind is in this um, calc in these calculations, I didn't include any significant figures, so I'm not sure if your teacher will want that. Also, a question uh, that you may have is what's the point of doing all these calculations um, and these dilutions? Is why don't we just, uh, for example, if we needed a one to 1,000 and 24 ratio, why don't we just add this much amount into the test tube? Um, yeah, in theory, with your pen and pencil, you could do that. You can add uh, 0 0.390625 microliters, but in real life, it's difficult to find an instrument or a tool that is cost-effective that will add exactly this amount. Um, but it is possible, for example, to add uh, 100 microliters or maybe 10 microliters, but an amount like this, at this specific, it'll be difficult, and that's why we're doing zero dilutions.